oh, that sounds really painful. I'm sorry to hear you're going through that. So one thing with PCOS that's important to talk about first is that there's two main categories of PCOS. One is people who are going to express elevated DHEA sulfate, and the other is going to manifest itself in elevated levels of DHT. So you can take a hormone test and get some insights as to which of these two categories you're in. Once you know that, you can do more uh, to specifically help yourself. Uh, so in the DHEA sulfate elevated category, this is very frequently going to be have a huge stress component to it, um, and one in this category may also see uh, more facial hair, hair growth happening and want to treat this from a, a stress and a blood sugar direction. Um, the other kind with elevated DHT, uh, here you can also see some facial hair and, and, and some balding on the head um, and you may be too early on in the journey to see these symptoms. So, so this is why I suggest having a hormone test to really know what's going on ahead of time. Uh, here you may also see like moodiness and irregular cycles. Anyhow, um, saw palmetto and nettle can be two really good herbs here because you want to block what's called the 5-alpha metabolism. This is how you have certain hormonal metabolites that are turning into DHT, which is, is not helping you. Um, of course, you know, so as I mentioned, insulin resistance is, is a huge problem for a lot of people with PCOS, it's something you definitely want to focus on. Uh, and, and it's just, you know, working on, on healthy blood sugar balance is a good longevity strategy, first and foremost. So you want to work on blood sugar balance, have a, you know, get a finger prick uh, test kit that you can use at home. We have one on our, our recommended Amazon products page that's tested to be the most accurate for home testing. Um, so you can go to addictivewellness.com slash FP to grab one of those. It's like, it's like $10, $12, very inexpensive. And you can just test your fasting blood glucose in the mornings. So ideally, you want it below uh, 85, at least below 90. If you're getting above 90, you're getting into a little bit of a uh, danger zone of being borderline pre-diabetic. If you're over 100, then you're pre-diabetic. Um, so, so that's the first thing to look at. Uh, and then you want to really work on hormonal balance. So having a clean diet, plenty of healthy fats, um, herbs that are going to be supporting hormone health, uh, things like ashwagandha and white peony and, and uh, gelatinized maca. I mean, we can go so much into that, but you know, we have other videos that, that talk about that. So I'll save that for another conversation. If you want to talk more about that, by all means, send it in the question box. Um, make sure you're getting enough rest and getting quality sleep, quality REM sleep, quality deep sleep, uh, between an hour and a half and two hours of each of those each night. Um, and be exercising, but don't be overtraining. Um, and avoid endocrine disruptors in, in the forms of household products, in the forms of uh, pesticides and hormonally fed animal products. Uh, avoid endocrine disruptors is also in the form of personal care products and uh, drinking out of plastic water bottles. And supplementarily, supplementarily, you can look at things like inositol, which is a form of sugar alcohol that can be very helpful with PCOS, and then also vitamin D, magnesium, zinc, um, omega-3s, long chain omega-3s coming from either fish, krill, or algae oil, and N-acetylcysteine. Um, watch out for, of course, processed dairy or other processed foods, um, and then work on gut health. So probiotics and fermented foods are going to play a huge role here. Uh, and so kind of bringing all these things together. But as I mentioned, the more you can find out about your specific variety of PCOS, whether you're the elevated DHEA sulfate type or whether you're the elevated DHT type, you're going to be able to go about it more strategically.